many places. I've lived all over the world, but I always had to come home. I always had to come back to Mississippi. It's just something different about living here, man. Our people are um, polite, you know, caring, but at the same time, our people down here are destroyed. Our people down here literally don't even see that they're in slavery. Our people who have a blind eye to slavery. Down here, this is what we call, what me and some of the officers laugh and joke about. We say, this is what the Dukes are. The Dukes you read about in Genesis 36, I believe. Uh, the Dukes of Esau. Th this is where they are. This is where those spirits are today because um, it's a strong, strong demonic spirit down here of our, on our people where our people won't even look the white man in the eye here. That our people are literally afraid to even say that the white man is the one to put us in slavery and we got we got images all through Mississippi there's a whole bunch of uh, civil rights museums all through Mississippi and, and you look at them and you know there's pictures there showing who had us in slavery and, and you know it's just we've been beat down so 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 much here in Mississippi to where we don't we don't even want to say who the enemy is Side Christ Bless, this opposite the water, IUIC Mississippi. Uh, we down here in Yazoo City, you know what I'm saying, doing this community event. Uh, matter of fact, the mayor is going to be in here as well. So, uh, Lord's will, uh, Cuts from the Street, Tennessee is going to get real direct and live with her and ask her some questions concerning the crime here, concerning um, the situation of poverty here and everything. So, stay tuned for that as well. But ultimately, we're going here and do a, a presentation showing who we are according to the Bible, what we must do to get back to our God, and what we must do to get to the kingdom of heaven. So with that, I hope our brothers and sisters that will be attending this event really hearken to what we got to have to bring out. And when they see the order, and when they see the structure, and when they see the discipline of all these young men, they got to, got, they got to, have to ask themselves, is something about these men that they are disciplined. Why are they disciplined? Why are these men in order? Right hand! Who's the king? Ray! Drive! Right hand! Done! First time these folks done heard this right here, man. We down in the jungle deep, man, with the word of God, man. Hey, this is how we do it at IUIC, man. The rest of you brothers, man, get off your ass and get hey, to these small towns and wake the people up. Shalom, most high Christ bless. I'm so Obadiah, Mississippi. We down here in Yazoo. We gleaming these folks, these, these people out here trying to get this truth. We picking up the remnant. That's right. We down here in the highways and hedges doing this thing. All praise to the most high. Mississippi is not actually Mississippi's problem. Mississippi is America's problem. Because if America wanted to do something about what has been going on in Mississippi, it could have stopped by now. It wouldn't have been in the past few years, 40, uh, between 40 and 50 churches bombed and burned. You see, and this, this, you know, this leads me to say, you know, all of the burning and bombing that was done to us and the house, nobody never said too much about that, and nothing was done. But let something be burned, you know, by a black man, and then, my God, you know. You see, the flag is, is drenched with our blood. Because, you see, so many of our ancestors was killed because we have never accepted slavery. Here we are again, live on scene, cuts from the streets, here in Yazoo, Mississippi, at the Community Fellowship. Right here I have the young man by the name of? Martez Martin. 
Martez Martin, and you are? Ricardo Jordan. Ricardo Jordan. These two young men want to be on camera, so we have them here today. All right. What else is going on here today? It's just a festival, right? Where the, where the community comes together. And like you said, they, they learn about the Bible. We have preachers. We have the mayor here today. And that's what we're going to do. Let me ask y'all one quick question. What is your nationality? Ben. Your nationality is Ben? And you? Basketball. And your nationality is basketball. So here in Yazoo City, man, we know that we got some work to do. All right? You got to understand, y'all young man got to understand is that y'all are the Israelites of the Bible. Have y'all ever heard of the... Israelites in the Bible? No, sir. What about you? No, sir. Okay. Well, the Israelites are the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, according to the Bible. That's who y'all are. That's who I am. That's who these brothers are that's out here with us today, the guys in purple that y'all saw earlier. All right? Let me ask you this. What color is Christ? Uh, black. You think Christ is black? All right. What about you? White. You think Christ is white? So you think Christ is white, you think Christ is black. So what does the Bible say the color of Christ is? Red. He says it's red. Huh? I think. The Bible says what? He red. Now hold on, man. I think you're just going off of what he's saying, bro. So y'all go to church, right? I go to church. You go to church? You go to church? Okay, so when the church, what, what color, do they have a picture of Jesus Christ in your church? Like, like on, like. Like a picture anywhere, up the big picture on the on the walls or in the back. Okay, what color is in the back? Uh, like, like, like mine. I'm telling you, man, cause mine be white. Like when I walk in the back, it be white. It so Christ is white right so your Christ is white. What color is your Christ at church? It look mixed. It must look mixed. Okay, so you can see that the confusion here. These young men, they like, hey, Christ is white, Christ is black, Christ is red. But the Bible actually tells us the color of Christ. All right, when we go into the book, hey, bro, give me Revelations 1, 14, 15 real quick. I'm going to show you this, this scripture, all right, in the Bible. Because the Bible is, has the answers to everything that we need to know. And one of the, the things that we do need to know is the color of the man that we call Jesus Christ. Do you think he... Uh, He's the, the one that's coming back to save us? Yes, sir. You think he's, so do you, okay, let, let me ask you this. How many white men have saved you in your life? Mm, it's been, it been like a couple, but it don't be no men. It probably be about like three or four. How they, how, what they do to save you? What they do? Like, like you know, like, when you get like, get in a lot of trouble, they don't want you to like, get fight. They, they just like. So they know? hindered you from getting into trouble? Yeah. Okay, okay. Give me that scripture, bro. So this is the color of Christ right here. Call it and read it. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So the Bible says that Jesus Christ's head and his hairs were white like wool. Who has woolly hair? What people on the earth have woolly hair? Huh? No, the texture of woolly. Texture, you know, like a sheep. What about, look at his hair. He like, he like. Wool. Yeah, like wool. It's like it's like his. We'll, we'll take your head off. Mm -hmm. Like wool. You see, wool is a is a coarse, is a kind of kind of rough feeling, like a sheep. You seen the, the hair on a sheep before? That's what wool. So we're coming to you live here in Yazoo City right now, and I have this young lady with me, whom is the mayor, and your name is? My name is Diane Delaware. Miss Diane Delaware. So she just gave a great speech in the inside, and so I just want to know, here in Yazoo City, what? What do you see are the problems that are the people face with? Well, before I answer your questions about the problems, uh -huh. I'd like to tell you something about the great things in Yazoo City. Okay. Most people focus on the problems all mm -hmm. the time. Uh, we are a great community. Okay. We are a well, uh, close community. We protect each other. We take care of each other. Uh, we are always, if we, when you come to Yazoo City like at this event, you will always find people working together okay. and uh, assisting one another. We just had a recent spell of cold, cold weather, mm -hmm. and we don't have a shelter in Yazoo city mm. and you know it was something that uh, um, most people would have been very very worried about but actually our people took each other in so we are a close community we all know each other 
and uh, we take care of each other. And we are moving to help our economy to working together. Okay, great, great. So it's more like a family atmosphere here. I see as the crowd draws in, it seems like a lot of people know a lot of people around here. And I didn't want to, I didn't mean to throw you off by asking you what were some of the problems, but just some of the things that, you know, us being in the community, um, sometimes we as uh, so-called black people, we, we're in a poverty-stricken area. So when I asked that question, I was just basically find, wanting to know is like, what are the things that you see? And then on top of that, the solutions that, you know, that you may feel to correct those things that are going wrong? Well, like all communities, our community has problems. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I didn't mean to imply that right, our right, community right. does not. Obviously, we are a community of 11,000, about 11,500 people, 85% black. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can see around you, we have infrastructure issues. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we have roads that need repair. Mm -hmm. And we... Um, given our tax base we don't have enough money to do that but as I said earlier that is not uh, something that really small towns have ever done for themselves but we have been led to believe that small towns paved their own streets and built their own infrastructure not the case but in America uh, there is not much building going on in small rural towns, and um, there is not much infrastructure work, infrastructure work being done. And given that we are poor, we are not always uh, at the top of the list. Mm -hmm. So we have to truly prove ourselves to those who have those fun that funding. And given that there is a lot of poverty in our town, yes, we suffer from all of those kinds of things, credit ratings and uh, not being able to take care of your maintain your homes and having right, all right, the money right, right. for that. Our crime rate is not very high in Yazoo City and we're fortunate. And we have really, really good resources and people working with us. So we are, are coming along. We are doing much better uh, than we have in the past, but there is much work in front of us. Daniel 7 and 25, I see they try to take the Sabbath from me. They took me from Jerusalem and tried to Babylon me. They put me in through slavery and put the paddle on me. But now it's wartime, I got the Bible on me. Fire coming, it's getting ready for Esau. But he don't want no beef, he like a meat raw. Prophecy, captivity for my enemies. I'm from the tribe of Judah, so check the pedigree. Yeah, and me and Christ look a lot alike. 144 shine and that's a lot of lights. He also said we'll be hated for his sake. So if we had an Instagram, we wouldn't get a lot of likes. Shining, glowing, gleaming, forever man Keeping the laws and the faith is the better plan Yeah, if the commandment is a lamp then Tell me, who the hell is Thomas Edison? Edison. Shining Ever since I put my fringes on I've been shining Ever since I let all my sins go Shining Now I'm my brother's keeper And we shining Shining, 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 shining. Shining. We gon' let this whole world glow We gon' let this whole world know We the light of this world, so Shining We gon' let this whole world glow We gon' let this whole world know We the light of this world, so We the salt on the earth You know we got much flavor We're like a city on a hill So they gotta see us we the light on the candle We're gonna light this whole house up Oh, oh. Shining, shining Ever since I put my fringes on I've been shining Ever since I let all my sins go Shining Now I'm my brother's keeper And we shining Shining, shining, shining Shining we gon' let this whole world glow We gon' let this whole world know We the light of this world, so So the blacks and Hispanics must learn the truth That we are the biblical 12 tribes of Israel Okay? Alright? And we went into slavery because the Israelites broke God's laws, statutes, and commandments If I ask you Why did we go, how did you end up in Yazoo, Mississippi? How did you end up on one side of the earth, on this side of the earth? How did they know to come get you and not nobody else and build the greatest kingdom on earth? It's something they know about you that you don't know. It's something about you that they know that they're not going to tell you. And we're going to get into what it is that they know that you don't know. All right? 
So, all right. Give me Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. All right, read. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime. So Paul told the Israelites that were scattered in Rome, he said, whatsoever things that was written aforetime, meaning written earlier, read, were written for our learning. So this Bible was written for our learning. Okay? This Bible was written so we'll know who we are in the last days. All right, read. That we, through patience, it said through patience, because we're waiting on our salvation. So you got to have patience. And what? And comfort. And comfort. This is the scriptures. Jesus Christ is our comfort. Okay? That's our comfort. Read. Of the scriptures might have hope. So that's our hope. We got to find our comfort in the scriptures. Not off our hearts. Not on what we think. Not on what our pastor think. Okay? We got to go into these scriptures and find your comfort. All right? So, what's the next slide? Okay, give me 1 Kings 8 and 46. The book of 1 Kings, chapter 8 and verse 46. If they sin against thee. So, the Most High God, uh, King Solomon was praying to the Most High God, and he said that the Israelites sinned against you. Read. For there is no man that sinneth not. Because everybody done committed sin. Read. And thou be angry with them. And if God get angry with the Israelites, nobody else. He said, if God get angry, listen. And deliver them to the enemy. And he delivered them to the enemy. So that they carried them away captives. Carried them away what? To carry them away captive. Carry us away captives. It's starting to sound familiar. Who was carried away captive? We were. I'm showing you these things to let you know that the Bible is talking about a specific group of people and they was carried away captive. Read. Unto the land of unto the land of the enemy. Unto the land of the enemy. We was brought here by force, not choice. Okay? So we was brought to the land of the enemy. Read. Far or near. We came from one end of the earth unto the other. Yet, if he this King Solomon praying, he said, but yet. If they shall bethink themselves. But think means to remember. So 2018 is time for us to remember who we were before we got on the slave ships. Alright? So it's time for us to remember who we were before we got on the slave ships. Yet they shall bethink themselves in the land whether they were carried captives and repent and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them away captives, saying, we have sinned and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. So that's what we got to do, y'all. And we're going to show you something. This is Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. I want to show you first that the Bible is talking about you. This ain't the white man's book as the people portray. The white man didn't write this book. The white man took this book after not teaching you how to read and write for over 400 and some years, and then he taught you religion out of this book. But you're gonna find out today that the Bible is actually your history book. I can ask you what happened to you before you got off the slave ship. Half of y'all gonna say you don't know. You don't know how great you were. You don't know that you were kings and princesses walking the earth. You got the slave ship, we've been taught that we was Negro, horse monkeys, and coons. And that's how our people act today. All right, so watch this, read. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage. He said that Jeremiah was going to discontinue from his heritage, meaning his heritage was going to be cut off. Read. That I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. He said he was going to cause Jeremiah for his disobedience to serve his enemies, not his friends. In the land which thou knowest not. In the land which he knoweth not. This sound familiar? Talking about you coming to America. Read. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger which shall burn forever. We made God angry. So that's how we ended up here on slave ships. Alright? Who am I? That's what you gotta ask yourself. Who are you according to the Bible? Okay? Who are you? Alright, I passed out some cards earlier. I think I passed out 10 cards. Who got those cards? And I asked 10 people, what was their nationality? All right, let's see what we got. Read what you got. I got one that says black. 
We got one person said they are black. I want y'all to pay attention to how important this is. Read. African American. One says African American. Afro American. One says Afro American. An Afro is a hairstyle. What a brother with the Afro? They're just a hairstyle. What else you got? African. African. So look, those are. We asked ten people and we got five different answers. But if you ask a Japanese who they are, what are they gonna say? Japanese. Ask him where he's from, he's gonna say Japan. Ask a Chinese who he is, what are he gonna say? I'm Chinese, I'm from China. Alright? But I asked a black man or a black woman that was born here in America who they are. I get five different answers. Y'all see the problem? We have been discontinued from our heritage that the Most High God gave us. So, all right, here we go. Who am I? Are you a Negro? Negro just means black. All right? Negro just means black. Color. Are you colored? Y'all know this when we got the slave ship. I'm going in order. We was called, they had Negroes for sale. Then we went from Negroes to colored folk. All right? Then we went from colored folk to black. Black is just a color in a crayon box. That's not who you are. That's not where you come from. Where is the land of black? <clears throat> where, what language did black speak? You are African? Okay, you think you are African, right? All right, watch this. Are you American? I know y'all don't think y'all American, do you? You can't be African and American. Y'all know, who knows where the word Africa come from? Raise your hand. See, this knowledge we came here with. You see a new breed of black men and we invading people with knowledge. It's not rap music, dancing, singing, and stepping. We coming to people with books because we got to teach these young people how to uh, read, how to put down the video games, social media, and read. Because they say you want to hide something from a Negro, do what? Put it in a book. So the book we opened up was the Holy Bible. And we, we, hey, we found out a whole lot of stuff that they was hiding from us. So you can't be from Africa. Africa comes from a white Roman general. His name was Scipios Africanus, okay? He defeated Hannibal in the Second Punic Wars and named that land Africa. America comes from a white man named Amerigo Vespucci. He was with Christopher Columbus then, okay? He was an uh, uh, Italian map maker, okay? And he was with Christopher Columbus then, and he conquered this land and named it America. So how you gonna come from two white men? Jesse Jackson just started calling us African American in 1985, 86, something like that. Just made us up some and started calling us, you African and you American. That's not true according to the Bible. How you know? Cause the word Africa ain't in the Bible and the word America's not in the Bible. So you gotta ask yourself, who am I? Where are you from? Some people say Africa, right? Let's see, let's read about it. You're so smart, you think you're from Africa, right? So let's read about it. There's over 54 countries in Africa, right? So you're from Africa, which one are you from? Africa is a continent, not a country. So if you're from Africa, which country are you from? Mozambique, Tanzania, Zambia, Le uh, Sierra Leone, Ghana? Where are you from? You don't know. What language did you speak if you're from Africa? You speak in English now because that's what they taught you when you got the slave ship. You speak in English, but what was your national, I mean, what was your language before you got on the slave ship? Let's see about Africa, what they speak, how many languages. Y'all might can't see it, but right here it says it's over 15, it's between 1,500 to 2,000 African languages. If you're from Africa, which one did you speak? Your answer is, I don't know. So watch this. So to teach you who you are, we got to go back to the book of Genesis. Because God created 18 nations in the Bible. And there's no end to God's people, okay? He created 18 nations. Guess what? Those 18 nations are here today, walking the earth. So you got to ask yourself, if I'm not black, if I'm not a Negro, if I'm not uh, uh, African or American, who am I? 
So you gotta go back to the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis means the beginning. It's the beginning of books. So I hope y'all taking notes. Alright, take notes, write this down right here. We're gonna go all the way back to the book of Genesis, and I'm gonna show you who you are today. You might wanna ask yourself why. This got a major part on why our people conduct themselves in such a manner in 2018 that's ungodly. You wonder why it's games in our community? You wonder why our babies come to the house pregnant by the age before they're 18? Why there's no marriage in our communities? Why it's games? All this stuff in our community because we have no self-identity. You can't know where you're going if you don't know where you come from. You can't know where you're at if you don't know where you come from. So we're going to go back to the book of Genesis and do what? And show you who we are without a shadow of doubt and where we come from. Alright? So, give me the book of Genesis, bro. Give me Genesis chapter 25 and verse 21. I got to take you to the beginning. I'm going to try to hurry up and speed through this. Genesis 25. Who heard the story of Jacob and Esau? You heard the story of Jacob and Esau? Okay, this is what we're going to go through and show you the story of Jacob and Esau to show you who we come from. Listen, the book of Genesis chapter 25 and verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him and Rebekah his wife conceived. So Rebekah is finna ready to have children. Alright? So Rebecca is going to have children read. And the children struggle together within her. I want y'all to pay attention. These children are struggling before they even come out of her. She got children in her struggling. Struggling. Read. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? She said, Lord, why am I hurting like this? If it be so, why am I thus? Read. And she went to inquire of the Lord. So she went and asked God. Read. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. It says two nations are in your womb. It didn't say just two babies in your womb. But out of those two babies, it's going to come two nations. Two nationalities of people are in your womb, Rebecca. Read. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And they are very different. Two manners of people. These two nations, they're going to be different. Two manners. Read. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. So one of these nationalities is going to be stronger than the other nationality. One nation is going to be stronger than the other. Read. And the elder shall serve the younger. Uh -huh. So whoever come out first is supposed to be the servant to the younger. Read. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. So she had twins in her womb. I read. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. So the first one came out red, okay? All over like a hairy garment. I read. it. And thou shalt call his name Esau. And thou shalt call his name Esau. Alright, so one brother named Esau, he came out red. We don't get into that, but we want to concentrate on his other brother. Alright, read that. Verse 26, and after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. So his name was called Jacob. So you got Jacob and Esau. They were fighting in the womb before they even came. Alright, so you had one red. Alright? They didn't mention the color of Jacob. Why? Go to Genesis, uh, flip right quick. Go back to Genesis 2 and 7. Because at this point in time, on the earth, everybody was the same color until Genesis 25. Alright? This baby came out red. He was so red they had to write about it. And he was hairy. Read. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So, at this point in time, everybody was different shades of brown, all right? And to Esau came. He was red all over like a hairy god, and his brother was Jacob. His hand took hold of Esau's heel. This is just a picture right here, all right? So, let's go to Genesis chapter 32 and verse 28. Remember, it was Jacob and Esau. We're concentrating on the lineage of Jacob. Alright? Because it was Abraham, Isaac. Isaac now is having a child 
named Jacob. Read it. Genesis chapter 32 and verse 28. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. So he changed Jacob's name to what? To Israel. All right? So you're getting it. Now go to 2 Chronicles, 1 Chronicles 2. I believe it is. So Jacob, which his name is Israel, he has 12 sons. All right, we're going to read it in the Bible. This is the 12 tribes of Israel, who we are today. Now, watch this. The book of 1 Chronicles chapter 2 and verse 1. These are the sons of Israel. Because you remember, there's two nations in a womb. Now, these are the sons of Israel. Read. Reuben. He got a son named Reuben. If you look on this right here, Reuben, which would be the Seminole Indians today. How we know through Genesis 49 and uh, Deuteronomy 28 through the curses that God was going to put upon the children of Israel. The Seminole Indians, all right? Listen, Simeon. He got a son named Simeon, which would be the so-called, you probably can't see it, the small, the Dominicans today. Yeah, move that to the front. They might can see it off there. All right? We'll be the Dominicans. All right, read. Levi. He got a son named Levi which would be the so-called Haitians today. The Levites were the priests in the Bible. Read. And Judah. And the son named what? Judah. I want y'all to pay attention to this. Judah are the so-called American blacks. All right? Remember, he just said that uh, Israel was a prince that has power with God. Judah means God's praise. I mean, these are the people that praise God. God's praise. Meaning we the best at everything. You wonder why black people, we do the, everything the best. If it's running, skipping, hopping, jumping, basketball, football, and what? Singing. What else? Inventions. We invented. We, we came out of slavery inventing things. We came out of slavery and, and started a, a black Wall Street, our own movement. But why? Because we are the biblical tribe of Judah. That's how they knew to come get you and not go get the Chinese and build America. They wait 400 years then let the Chinese come over here, don't get you no job, and let them sell weed to you. Let them do your nails after they destroyed you. They knew something about you that you didn't know, and what they knew was that you was the tribe of Judah. That you was the same people that was in the land of Egypt when he told Pharaoh, go to tell, uh, when he told Moses and Aaron to go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. We are those same people. Don't let them trick you through their media and put white people on their TV screen and you thinking that you just a, uh, 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 a Negro bought over here on a cargo slave ship and stripped butt naked without nothing. No, that was you they went and got. Okay? All right, so he had a son named Judah. We're going to concentrate on Judah because Judah means Jew. That's where the word Jew come from. All right? The word Jew. Meaning that the people that are calling themselves Jewish are not the real Jews. The real Jews was bought over here on cargo slave ships, which happened to be you. That's why they say they Jewish, because they wishing to be something they're not. All right? So pay attention. Give me Romans chapter 11 and verse 1. So we're going to concentrate on God's chosen people. You from the seed of, uh, of Judah. All right? Now check it out. And some of y'all, a lot of y'all could be American Indians because a lot of Indians come from this land of Yazoo. It was an Indian tribe. I'm, I, if I read right, it was an Indian tribe. That's how you got your name. So when they came over here, they raped, robbed, and killed, uh, and killed our people and took this land. So a lot of y'all could be from the tribe of Gad as well. That's God's chosen people. If you go back, you see it on this sign? I can show it to you on this sign right here. We are the same people, but we don't know it. They was dark skinned too, just like you, until they mixed and mingled with the Europeans when they came. The tribe of Gad, okay? The Native American Indians. So check this out, read. Romans chapter 11, verse one. I say then, have God cast away his people? So Paul asked the Romans, he said what? Have God cast away his people? So I'm gonna ask you, have God cast away his people? What Paul say? God forbid. That means no, God forbid. God ain't cast away his people. 
His people are in a land not knowing who they are. Read. For I also am an Israelite of, of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. So Paul said he's the seed of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin would be your West Indian blacks, your so-called Jamaican, okay? In the islands out there, don't, uh, in Barbados, okay? The, the Bahamas and stuff, those are our people. We're the same people. And Paul was from the tribe of Benjamin. You from the tribe of Judah, all right? So, we're going to show you how we know. Now, give me Deuteronomy chapter uh, 1 and verse 1. I hope this is interesting to y'all, all right? Give me Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 1. Now you understand that who Israel is. Now listen to the Bible. Where you going to understand the Bible, first you got to know who the Bible was written to and written for. And you finna find out that the Bible was written to, for, and by one group of people. But guess what? Everybody ended up with it. And they taught you religion out of it and not what it actually says. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. So Moses spake to who? All Israel. All the 12 tribes of Israel, that's who Moses was speaking to when he wrote the law. Okay? Now, let's go to the, let me see. All right? Go to Deuteronomy 28 and 1. So we're going into the words Moses spake into the tribes of Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Gad, the 12 tribes. It is, remember, it was two nations. One nation was Esau. His name is Edom in the Bible, but he wrote to the nation of Israel. Who is Israel? Happens to be you. And listen, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1, and it shall come to pass. It said, it shall come to pass, meaning this going to happen. This is Moses. Read. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. He said, if you hearken. Who knows what hearken means? You know what hearken means? Obey. So Moses told the children of Israel, God said, if ye will obey, meaning hearken, read, diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Where is the voice of God at? If I'm speaking, what's coming out of my mouth? Words. So that's my voice. So the voice of God would be his word. So if you obey God's word, listen, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. See, understand that. He told Moses, if the children of Israel, my people that I've chosen, if you obey what I tell you, he was going to bless us above all nations on the earth. He was going to bless the Israelites, okay, above all nations on the earth. All right? Now, there's a flip side to this. What you think the flip side is? It's the other way, like the sister said. Let's see what the flip side is. He said if we do what he said do, he was gonna bless us. Now let's see if we be hard-headed what he said he's gonna do. Verse 15, but it shall come to pass. If thou will not, what? If thou will not, if you will not do, Hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If you don't listen to God, to observe, to do all his commandments, and, and if you don't do all his commandments, it's more than ten. If you don't do all what he say do, read. And his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses. Hold up. It said all oh, what, bro? All these curses. Who can tell me what a curse is? What's a curse? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Bang. So he told the Israelites, he said, look, if you don't do what I say do, all these curses, read, shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Yeah, all these curses was going to come upon you and overtake you. So let's go to the next slide. Give me verse 46 right quick. It's important that you know these curses because it's your identification. All right? We're going to prove it with the Bible. Read. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 46 and they shall be upon thee for a sign. He said these curses was going to be upon you for a sign if you don't do what I say do. For a sign. What does a sign do? A sign going to tell you. How do we know we was in Yazoo City? Because of this sign. How we knew the stop sign? Because of that sign. So these curses are going to be on you to, for your identification mark. Your identity. This is how you're going to know who you are in 2018 because God put curses on his people for what? 
their disobedience. So he said the curses is going to be on you for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Your seed is the children. So Moses wrote this, man, I don't know exactly how many years ago, let's just say two, three thousand years ago. He said the curses was going to be on you for an identification marker and upon your seed, meaning your children. So now in 2018, I'm going to show you that we are those same people that Moses was sitting there speaking to. All right. How we know? Give me Deuteronomy 28 and verse uh, 16. This the first curse he said, if you be disobedient to me. Listen, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 16. Curse shall thou be in the city. He said one curse is you're going to be in the city. Every city you go to, you're going to be cursed. You can go to Memphis, you can go to Jackson, you can go to Atlanta, you can go to New Orleans, you can go to Chicago, you can go to Beijing, China, you can go to Berlin, Germany, wherever you go. He said curse you, you're going to be in the city. All right? Alright. Curse you was gonna be in the city. So whatever city you go to, you was gonna be cursed in. Alright? It's the city limits of Jackson. You go there, our people curse. Read the second part. Check this out. And curse shall thou be in the field. Curse you was gonna be in the field. Can y'all see this picture? This stuff is in the Bible. We was cursed in the field. Chopping cotton 300 some years for free was a curse from the Most High God for our disobedience. Chopping cotton was a curse. Alright? Living in those conditions like this, a duplex shotgun house is a curse. Listen. Big Mama, Big Papa. Big Mama and Papa. That was a curse, y'all. Curse you was going to be in the city and curse you was going to be in the field. They working for free. I couldn't imagine going to work 40 hours a week now for free. Somebody better pay me my money. But they did it for free, y'all. Right here in Yazoo City. Alright? Curse you was going to be in the city and the field. That's another curse. For us to have to have a movement to tell another group of people that we are, we are man. That's a curse. For to have a Black Lives Matter movement, that's a curse. Why we gotta tell people our lives matter? Because you are under a curse for your disobedience. Read. Oh, hold on. That's another curse in the city and the field. You got gang members, GD, Bloods, Vice Lord, Crips. That's a curse. Latin King, all this stuff, uh, that's a curse that we, we gotta deal with for our disobedience. All right? Women fighting, pulling each other hair out of their head every weekend, every day. That made her laugh. She's like, oh, God. That's a curse. Y'all understand that we used to be a princess on earth, but now that's not all you know how to do. Throw your behind in a circle, holler, hey, and, and fight. That's a curse. It's time for you to come out of it. We came out of it. We got wives who came out of it. If we want to change in our community, it's time for us to realize who we are and teach our children how great we are and come out of it. All right? So let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 32. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 32. This is another curse. Listen. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. It said our sons and our daughters was going to be given unto another people. An oxen slave block. Alright? An auction slave block. Read that again so they know the Bible was talking about them. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. It happened to us during slavery, y'all. You're not going to hear that nowhere else. When you open the Bible, you go to church, they start you off with Jesus. You're not reading the beginning of what happened. Who is Jesus? What tribe he from? Where he, who he coming back for? Who did he come to save? You got to open a book and read it. Said, curse you is going to be, uh, 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 thy sons and daughters shall be given into another people. All right? Now, uh, slave auction, Negroes were sold. We was given into another people because we were disobedient. That's another picture right there. They negotiate which slave they want. If y'all can see that. All right? Read it from the top again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look. Say your eyes was going to look. Read. And fail with longing for them all the day long. 
said your eyes was gonna look. Y'all seen 12 Years a Slave? When that woman kid got sold, she sit there and cried on that porch for weeks. Because what? Read that part again. And thine eyes shall look. Say you was gonna look and see your kids being sold. Master Charles was gonna get you. Master Williams was gonna come get you. Master Smith was gonna come get you. I read and fail with longing for them all the day long. That you was going to cry all day long. Read and there shall be no might in thine hand. But you weren't going to have no power in your hand to get your children back. Don't y'all know that happened to us? That's in the Holy Bible that that was going to happen for our disobedience? You never heard that in the Bible because they're not gonna, they taught you religion out of the Bible and not what the Bible actually saying. They're not going to teach the slave how important they are. They're not going to teach the slave how special they are according to God. It's up to us to teach our people this. They wouldn't even let you read the Bible. If they caught you reading the Bible, you were dead. They had one person there teach to read the Bible. What's the pastor? He'll go around to all the plantations in the field and he'll teach them how to shuck and jive and say, slave, obey your master. Certain scriptures out of the Bible they took to make you obey them. But as you see now, that that's not true, what they were teaching us, all right? So, you see the woman, she crying. Wasn't nothing she could do to get her kids back. Fast forward to 2018, you want to. All y'all little children in here, all the man gotta do is come over. Come up here with a little band that got, and take y'all off the jail, guess what? Ain't nothing, we can do about it to the morning. But if you go in the white people neighborhood and take their kids or any other nation, they gonna get their kid back tonight. You can believe that. They gonna sit outside your door with a bomb, with grenades and everything to get their little, little, little Ellie back. It is what it is. All right, so watch this. Let's go to another curse. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28 and 37. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment. Who knows what astonishment means? Huh? Amazement. He said, if you don't do what I say do, you're no longer going to know that you are an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, but you're going to become an amazement. Don't y'all think black folk we're in amazement? Watch this. Let me show you something. We think that's God right there. We think the man that put us on the ship is Jesus and that's God. Then we ask our people, does it matter? They say it don't matter. That's an amazement to the other nations. They think they're, we're their God. That's an amazement. What's another amazement? Excuse me? Who see the amazement in that picture? A black woman with blonde hair. The other nations look at us like, whoa, you got the best hair on the planet. Why? Sister Her, you got the best hair on the planet. You got her like Jesus. And we gonna get into that too. Another amazement is what? That's the same one. She trying to change herself to white. That's an amazement. Yeah, she hate herself. That's an amazement. The man too, putting blonde hair in his head. That's an astonishment. What else? Black women just twerking, throwing it behind everywhere they can find it and put it. That's an amazement. Gangs in the community, that's an astonishment. We weren't gonna know who we were, but we was gonna become an astonishment. Read. Look at that right there. Young black men point guns at each other. You know, people look at that picture and be like, whoa. You became an astonishment. Watch this. And a proverb. A proverb, who know what a proverb is? You gonna come to astonishment and a proverb. A proverb is a wise, true saying. Okay, like the book of Proverbs in the Bible, they're wise, true sayings. But you weren't gonna know who you were no more. You was gonna discontinue from your heritage and you was gonna become a proverb. You wanna hide something from a nigga? Put it in the book. That's what they think about you. Here go another one. See this stuff all I got off, this, off the internet. Niggas love chicken. That's a proverb. Niggas love grape Kool-Aid, grape soda. You know they say that about these uh, bottles. All right? So you was gonna become a, an astonishment, a proverb, and what else? And a byword, a byword. A byword means something else you was gonna be called by besides an Israelite, that you was gonna be called something else. Let's see what that something else is, watch this. Bam, Negro. You not Negro, that just means black. That's a byword. Color, that's a byword. You don't know you're an Israelite, but you think you're color. 
That was a byword. Black, a byword. African, a byword. American, a byword. All right? So we became an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. Give me verse 47. Verse 47. That because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. I want y'all to pay attention to this, y'all. He said because we didn't want to serve him with joyfulness and gladness of heart. You know how Negroes do. We complain about everything. We ain't never happy for what God has done for us. We got to complain when it's hot. It's hot. When it's cold, it's too cold. We always complaining. He said, but since you want to complain, guess what he said he's going to do? Listen. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore, he said, therefore, now you want to do this? He said, therefore, shall thou serve thine enemy. He said, we got to go serve our enemies, y'all. Now pay attention. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Uh -huh. And what? In hunger. So now you don't want to do what I say, dude. You might want to go to McDonald's, right? They say, now you got to go to your enemies in hunger. You might want some KFC. Who want that? You might want to go to Kroger's. Who want that? You might want to go to Walmart. Who want that? You want, hey. So he said, we were going to have to go to our enemies for hunger, meaning food. Read and in thirst. And in thirst. You want some aquafina? We don't own these things. All right? You want some Coca-Cola? We don't own these things. I'm telling you our identification marker. You want some water? We don't own this. You got to pay your light and gas to Yaz uh, your water bill to Yazoo City. Who own the water? We might have a black mare, all praise to the Most High God, but we don't own the water that's flowing through these uh, pipes. God said that we was going to have to go to our enemies. And water fall out the sky for free. But in some states you get caught collecting it, you can go to jail and get a fine. Alright? But we got to go to our enemies, not our friends. I want y'all to understand the Bible. God is telling us that we got enemies. So you got to understand what God is telling you. That you got to go to your enemies for food, water, and what else? And in nakedness. So if you're naked, you need clothing on your body. So you got to even go to your enemies for clothing. Right. Tommy Hill, Philly. Louis Vuitton. Nike. These are some names. You, Ralph Lauren, Black Oak Love Polo. We got to go to our enemies now, okay? Sean John might own it. P. Diddy might own it. But I bet you one thing, he don't own no cotton field that they got the raw textile to make it whatever he had designed. So he had to go to his enemy to get what he wanted. Not your friend. God said that you was gonna have to go to your enemies. See, 2018, see back in the 60s, black folk, we knew who the enemy was. We stood up against the enemy. We fought our enemy. But now, 2018, somehow, we don't forget who the enemy is. The enemy so now they love us. They want to be our friends. Let me keep reading. It says that we got to go to our uh, enemies for food, water, and clothing. And guess what? And in want of all things. That's how you know we these people, because we the only people that got to go to our enemies for the want of all things. That's a picture of somebody that drive a license. If you want to drive on the road they stole from you, you got to get, get a driver license from them. What else? A birth certificate. You got to go to your enemies to get a birth certificate and a social security card to be legal in the country they stole. That's right. They here illegal. Listen, a business license, we got to go to our enemies. Oh, this is a good one right here. To get an understanding of the Bible, we had to go to our enemies. You think your enemy gonna tell you what you need to know or what they want you to know out of this book? They taught us what they what they wanted us to know. If you if you can see this picture, I wish it was blue blown up. You got the main religion that's in America was started by the so-called enemy. Alright? You got the Baptist religion, was started by a man named John Smith. Alright? You got what's that uh Pentecostal? Alright? All these, I wish I could see it better. You got the Mormons. Charles Char Paul. What's that right here? Jehovah's Witness was started by who? Je Je Joseph Smith. 
the Mormons. What's that? Charles Russell. That's Jehovah's Witnesses. I know that one. What's this? Seven day adventure. What I'm telling y'all is we had to go to our enemy to learn these things. And they didn't teach us what we needed to know, but they taught us what they wanted us to know. And that was slave, obey your master. Alright? Let's go to the next slide. Alright? Finish it out. Watch this. This is how you know we God chosen people because he said that we didn't do what he said do. This was something that was going to happen. Finish that verse. And he, so this enemy is a he. What he was going to do? Shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Who put yokes of iron on our neck, y'all? This stuff is in the Bible. Our enemy was going to put yokes of iron on our four parents' necks. Now we ain't got it around our neck. It's on our brain. Stuck in what? Religion. He put yokes on. Sister, he done that to you. That was a curse from God because you were disobedient. Put something on your mouth where you couldn't eat. Put yokes of iron on your neck where you couldn't run away and escape through the woods. Alright? Read that. Keep reading. Until he have destroyed thee. He said he kept them yokes on the neck until you was destroyed. So Abraham Lincoln knew to sign a emancipation proclamation because he knew that you was destroyed. You no longer knew that you was an Israelite, but you thought you was what? A Negro, colored, black, African, American. That's when he said, you can take it off their neck now. They don't know who they are, where they come from. That's why he did that. Give me 63. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. He said, for our disobedience, he was going to scatter us among all people. Okay? From the one end of the earth, even unto the other. From one end of the earth, even unto the other. So the Israelites, we all over the world. The both of us, of the tribe of Judah, happens to be in America. Because the Europeans and English came and got you. Read. And, and thou shalt serve other gods. He said, when you got scattered and got off the slave ship or whatever, you was going to serve other gods. And that's one God that we serve right here. We think the white man is God. He is not God. Listen. If you celebrated New Year's, he said we're going to serve other gods. That's the God of Janus. Who ever heard about the God of Janus? That's the God of beginnings and the God of ends. That's why I got two faces. He's looking in the past and he's looking in the future. Okay? That's the God of beginnings. That's where they get the word Janus, uh, January. Where's the one of soldiers God? It's a Greek Roman God. And if you celebrated uh, this right here, whether you was at home, in a club, or at church, guess what? You celebrated another God because God said for your disobedience that you was going to come to a land and you was going to serve other gods, okay? What's another God? Who's going to celebrate Easter? Y'all know Easter is not in the Bible. A bunny don't lay eggs, all right? Easter means Ishtar. Ishtar was a goddess of fertility. I want y'all to look this stuff up. Don't take my word for it. Look up the origins of Easter, and you're going to find out there was some sick stuff going on. It's about fertility. That's why the bunny lay a lot of eggs and kids go find them and all that. Because he had, it was fertility. All right? And during the time of his time, they was having orgies with kids and stuff. That's why everything naked. You see the cupid is talking about, uh, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the next one. Valentine's Day. That's another God right there. You was going to come and learn to serve. Who taught us this? Our enemies. All right? That's the God of Lupa, Lupa Curtis. Okay? The purpose. The feast of Luke Alright? That's Valentine's Day. It's gonna come up. Y'all better not celebrate this. Alright? They treat you and talk it was all about love. Yeah, when you look up the uh the origins of it, they were talking about fornicating with each other. They were having orgies. Why do you think everything they do, they gotta be naked? Everything, they naked. They kissing each other, they even said same people, two people get married now. Same sex. Because they are sick in their minds and they got our people sick out of their minds. Want y'all to keep listening. Alright? It said, we're gonna keep reading. Even wood and stone. It says, even wood and stone, we're gonna serve other gods. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known no wood. That wood is called Christianity. Because that's what everybody got. That's the wood they say from home on. This is Bible prophecy, y'all. Christianity, the, the most bloodiest religion on earth. Did y'all know that? 
What they done to us, they done it under Christianity. When they took the Indian's land, they done it under Christianity. They had a cross in their hand and made us worship and bow down to their white God. All right? And they built churches and courthouses and made you serve them. If not, they put you to death. They burnt the church down, burnt the cross in your yard. Listen. Christianity. That's wood and stone. What is stone? The cobblestone, the second biggest religion on earth, the second most murderous religion on earth, is called Islam. Islam. They put them on the news like they're the worst people on earth. No, y'all the worst people on earth. You don't destroy the whole nation of people. Won't even tell these people who they are, but keep locking them up, putting drugs, guns, and bullets in their neighborhood. Alright? Go to Deuteronomy, uh, Let's go to 68. Let me go skip to 68 and pray some time. 68. All right, watch this, y'all. Remember, go back and read Deuteronomy 28, and you're going to find yourself. All right, listen. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Because you remember I told you that the Israelites were in Egypt the first time. And he just bought them out of Egypt in the book of Deuteronomy. Because you got Genesis, you got Exodus. You got Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. And he said, if you don't do what I say do, he was going to bring you into Egypt again. What does Egypt mean? Let's see. Give me Egypt. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. The Bible must be read precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So that's why we go, it has its own dictionary within itself. And let's see what Egypt means. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. All right, so Egypt is synonymous for the house of bondage. What is bondage? Slavery. So go back. Now you're going to understand Deuteronomy 28. So Egypt is synonymous for slavery, for bondage, captivity. He just delivered them out of the land of Egypt. All right? But he said, if you don't do what I say, do read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Oh, he's going to bring you back into slavery again. Who know how we got here? Somebody yell it out. Slave ship. On uh, what? Slave ship. We got here on cargo slave ships. Did y'all know that? The Lord said he was going to bring us into Egypt again. Why do you think you go to Memphis? They got a pyramid down there. Because that was a slave trade post. Well, you think you go down there to Jackson, Mississippi? Everybody seen that sign? The little thing popped up right there. That's a call of pyramid. They know you in Egypt again. It's on the back of your dollar bill. On the back of every dollar is a, is a pyramid to remind you that you're back in your captivity. All right. Say so we're gonna go into Egypt again. How we go? With ships. With what? With ships. Man, that's in the Bible. Read it from the top. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Bro, right here, you can hold it up right there. That's a cargo slave ships. This stuff is in the Bible, but they're not teaching us this. We came into captivity. God chose the people had to come into captivity for their disobedience on cargo slave ships. They had them packed down in the bottom on a ship, urinated. Menstrual cycle, all that stuff was on the ship. That's sad. They're not going to teach you these things, but we come here to teach you today. Hoping that someone would want to get out here and teach these little children these things. Because this was going to save our community. By knowing who we come from, where we come from, that we was going to go into slavery on cargo slave ships. I know it hurts black people to watch old slavery pictures and movies and stuff, but you got to watch it because it's going to wake you up. You need to see what Big Mama and Papa went through because you think you got it made. You ain't got it made. They done destroyed your mind. They destroyed their bodies and their mind at the same time. All right? So we are going to go into cargo slave ships. I want y'all to understand that. And watch this. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. So we want to see our homeland as a people no more again. Who don't been back to Africa in here? Or Jerusalem? Who think Africa is the motherland? Raise your hand. Who was told that Africa was the motherland? 
We all was told Africa was the motherland. That's where we come from, right? Now let's go in the Bible and see where you're from. Watch this. The book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse 26. But Jerusalem, but where? Jerusalem. He said, but Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. So Jerusalem is the motherland. That was your land, Jerusalem. But you fled Roman persecution in 70 AD. You ran into the coast of Africa. You ran into the mountains of Africa. And then you ran all the way to the western coast of Africa. And in 1619, they knew that's where you was at. That's where they came and got you and bought you over here. You from Jerusalem, you're not from Africa. They're not going to tell you that. All right? Read, go back to Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way where all I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. So we want to go see our homeland as a people no more again. That happened to who? Us. And there ye shall be sold. Hold up. He said, there when you got the slave ships, you were going to be what? There ye shall be sold. Who got sold? When we got the slave ships. Us, white man, not the so-called Chinese, not the so-called Arabs. Those are the people that just own the stores in your community. I'm not from here, but I know because they're all over America. He said, "But you, what was gonna happen? There, you shall be sold unto your enemies." Uh oh, who sold us when we got the slave ship? Who sold us? It ain't no secret, y'all. The white man. It ain't no secret. There you go. Don't we need black men to stand up and say the white man? Don't let them be scared to say it now. It ain't our fault. We didn't write this. God said that we were going to be sold to our enemies, not our friends, y'all. Am I telling you going to do something to them? No. You be patient and you wait on God to move. Because he the one going to move them out the way with a thermonuclear fight. He destroyed last time with water. This time he comes with a fight. That's right. And it's called a nuclear bomb. That's right. And it's going to be fervent. Yeah. He's going to be hot. He's going to melt everything they don't build. All right? So we had said we were going to serve our, and you shall be sold to your enemies. For what? Bond men. For a slave man. And bond women. And bond women. Slave man and slave woman. And no man shall buy you. He said no man shall buy you. Buy you is an old Quaker word being saved. Can't nobody save you out of conditions but God. He sent his son Jesus Christ back to save you. He said no man can save you. Guess who tried? Look. Bam. Mark and Garvin tried. He tried to save black people out of their conditions. Alright? Bam. Martin Luther King tried to save us out of our conditions. He told us to join hands with the, our enemy. And since we join hands with our enemy, guess what black folks got? We ain't got nothing. All we do now is work beside them, drink out their water fountains, eat in their restaurants. We used to have a poor ball of the king. I'm not taking away from the bravery of that brother. Because if it wasn't from him, it, a lot of things would have happened. But his dream it wasn't of God. Okay? It wasn't to join hands with the enemy. It was to separate from the enemy. Y'all need to understand that. Because back in the 60s, we had our own school system. We had our own restaurants. We had our own movie theaters. We even had our own airports, our own hospital. Black Wall Street, 1920s. We had our, we was developing. We was going through oppression, but we was developing. But he said, no, I have a dream that all the little black boys and little black girls are supposed to hold hands, and now we holding hands with them. Now we got to go to their school system, and now by the age of uh, uh, 13, they can teach your little girl how to have oral sex. It ain't nothing you can do about it. They can teach them gender don't matter. Look, boy, you can go in the girl's bathroom. All because of their dream. Give me Luke chapter 1 and 68. I'm almost done. Why? I'm showing you why it's important to know who you are. Luke chapter 1 verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. So when you hear Israel now, don't think about the land that they don't call Israel. They got the fake Jews over there, them apostles playing like they you, which they gave their land to them in 1948 after World War II, after they killed Hitler and, and dominated them. They took those white uh, Khazar Jews and put them, uh, Jewish, 
people and put them over there in your land while you wasn't there. They converse. All right, read what you got. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. We the Israelites. For he have visited and redeemed his people. Now, everybody, his people. His is a, is a, uh, a possessive pronoun. He, he gonna visit and redeem his people. Not everybody. His servant David. Because that's the lineage Jesus come out of. He come out of David. Read. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which, he, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved. I want you to pay attention right here, bro, because you knew who the enemy was. But Christ is coming back that the Israelites should be saved from our enemies. Now, who was our enemy, bro? Who was our enemy in that verse? The white man. Now you're going to read it again and you're going to understand that your salvation is near. Right. When you hear this message right here, know that your salvation is near. Read. That we should be saved from our enemies. and We're going to be saved from our enemies because they're the one captured us. Right. Read. And from the hand of all that hate us. From the hand of all that do they love you? I know in Mississippi, y'all just read back in the history, y'all gonna know that these people do not love us. So he said that we were gonna be saved from our enemies. And from the hand of all that hate us. Not only does the white man hate you, guess what? The Arabs hate you. They don't eat pork, but they sell it to you. The Chinese people hate you. They just choked out a black girl on social media in North Carolina. They hate you. Tell me how she stole something. Hey, everybody! Hey, everybody! Hey, everybody. That's what they do. They hate you, but God is sending Christ back to deliver us. And we're going to be kings and rulers on this earth again. But guess what? He ain't going to let no nigga, excuse my name, run nothing. You got to renew your mind and come back to who you are. It ain't going to be no twerking in this kingdom. It ain't going to be no dope smoking. It ain't going to be no prostitution. It ain't going to be no uh, uh, whoremongering. Around. It ain't gonna be no jumping from her, then you go to her. See, that's what we used to do. All of us, we was in that. When we came back to this Bible, we entered into the kingdom of God. And now we got wives. Meaning one wife. And we learned to take care of our children. We learned to stop selling drugs to our own people. And we learned to do what? To come out and teach you so you can stop. See, this is the revolution right here. There's a new breed of black men on earth. And we're not selling drugs. We're not uh, uh, prostituting our women. We're not hating our brothers and killing our brothers. We're teaching these young men and young women how special they are according to God. Give me that in Deuteronomy 76 right quick. Let me show you how God said that uh, how special the Israelites was. I want y'all to understand. We're not niggas. Poor smuggling, Negro, black, coon, with all this stuff uh, they done called us. We are God's chosen people. We are the Israelites. Listen. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. He said that the Israelites are holy, meaning we are separate. We are different. Read. The Lord thy God have chosen thee. God has chosen us. We didn't choose God. Stop thinking you chose God. You chose to be in here right now. No, you could have been doing something else, but God chose every last one of you to be in here to hear this message. Because in the day when the time comes, you can't say, I didn't know. Listen, he said he chose us. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. To be a special people. Not no nigga. Not no porch monkey. Not no coon. Not no African American. He said he chose you to be special unto himself. Read. Above. No, no. Equal to. Above. See, they, we literally trying to be equal to somebody that God just said we're supposed to be what? Above. We're supposed to be above all people that are upon the face of the earth. We're supposed to be above. We're supposed to be running this thing. But we made God angry and God said, no. You're going to be below. You're going to have to serve your enemies because you are hard-headed. Just like y'all got children, right? You tell your children uh, to do something and if they don't do what they say do, what you going to do? You're going to punish them. If they do what you say, do what you're going to do. You're going to reward them. That's how you know we God chose the people. Because we didn't do what God say do. He punished us. What he punished us with? Cargo slave ships and whips. Chains. That's what he got punished us with. Oppression. With water hoses. With German shepherd bikers. Crosses in the yard. Tying us to pickup trucks. 
dragons, STDs, gangs. That's punishment from God. All right? Give me that. Revelation chapter 21, verse 12. And had a wall great and high. So we're talking about the kingdom of heaven. It had a wall great and high. I want y'all to know how special you are. Listen. It had 12 gates. It had 12 gates out for the 12 tribes of Israel. Not everybody. So to get in that wall, to get in that gate, you got to know what tribe you're from. Read. And at the gates, 12 angels. So at that gate, it was 12 angels. All right, read. Names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So it was the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, okay, to get in the kingdom. It ain't just no one big pearly gate. It's 12 gates. Uh huh? Uh, Revelation 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. So if you know that what we did to get in this situation was break God's commandments, what do we got to do to get out of it? Give me Acts 3 and 19 real fast. Give me a couple more minutes and we're we going to wrap it up. All right, so now I got to show y'all what we got to do to get out of this situation. We have lost our sense of identification. We have lost what we've done to God and, 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 and teed him off to the point where he delivered us to our enemies. So in order to arrange this thing and get back on top, it ain't through politics. It ain't through voting. We've been voting since 1965, and we still in the line voting. You don't never see no Chinese people in line saying, go vote. You don't never see no Arabs in line talking about, go vote. Make sure people vote. No, they don't do that because they ain't got to. 10 minutes, all right? So they ain't got to, why? Because they already own all the stores. But it's us trying to get to the top. And how we gonna get to the top? We gotta come back to God. We gotta come back to our true nationality. Voting ain't gonna do it. I'm just, I'm gonna be honest. All praise for the sister being American, but it's hard for her to change anything because she under a system that wants you to be oppressed. She only can go do so much to help you, but she cannot put you back on top. Christ is going to come back and put us on top. Listen to this. Give me Acts 3 and 19. Book of Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Bless, I mean, excuse me. Repent ye therefore and be converted. The Bible says it's time for us to come back to who we are. Repent and be converted. That your sins may be blotted out. Because our sins that we've done to God, our forefathers done to God, and teed them off, your sin got to be, our sins got to be blotted out. So we've done something wrong according to God, okay? Now we got to go into the Bible right quick, all right? This one you usually give people be like, oh, Lord. If we want change as a people, we got to change. I'm going to say that again. If you want change, you got to change. You get what I'm saying? You can't wait on no Barack Obama, Donald Trump, or none other politician to change your community. If you want change, you got to change. Listen. Um, Psalms chapter 19 verse 7. The Bible says, repent ye therefore and be converted. What's going to change you? The law of, the what? The law. So you got to come back to God, law, statutes, and the commandments of the Lord is perfect. See, that's perfect. Thou should not steal. That's perfect. Thou should not kill. That's perfect. Thou should not commit adultery. That's perfect. All right? You got to come back to the law. Well, I'm going to show you some laws that we're breaking. Listen. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. The testimony of the Lord is sure. All right, let's go to the law. All right? Give me Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 5. Here's the law that the children of Israel start breaking. And it made God mad because we was in Egypt and we learned a whole lot of garbage. We learned the ways of the Egyptians. Just like we in America, a lot of black people, we have learned the ways of America. And we was in Egypt, we did the same thing. So Moses had to get the children of Israel the law again. Because we have, we left God and we start serving their gods. Alright? So this is what God said. Listen. Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head. So the Bible is talking about the black man making baldness on his head. Y'all might say it doesn't matter. God said that the Israelite man is not supposed to put a razor on his head because the Egyptians were doing that. Alright? Thou shalt not make baldness upon their head. Alright, read. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. You're not supposed to shave off your beards. Your beard is a manly badge of dignity. That tells the difference between the female lion and the male lion. 
The male lion has a mane. It shows your sign of strength. There's two things in this earth that don't got a beard. And that's a baby and a woman. As a grown man, we got to learn to grow our beards. You see us men, we got beards. Why we look manly. All right? Listen. Keep reading. Neither, excuse me, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. See, that man, he got his hair in his beard. That's how the black man is supposed to be looking. Not blonde and all that. Listen. The older man, he looks fly with your gray beard. Look real manly. So don't think it's just a young folk thing. You look my looks. Look manly with your beard. You see what I'm saying? And the black woman, they love to feel that beard on their face, don't y'all? You kissing your husband, you like to feel it. There ain't nothing wrong with it. All right. All right? And said, neither shall they make cuttings in their flesh. Who know what they're talking about? I want y'all young people to understand this. What you think it's talking about? Make cuttings in your flesh. Who said it? Tattoos. But they're going to watch the American way and watch the NBA and the NFL and they're going to watch these rappers and they're going to come home from their neck all the way to their feet with tattoos. That makes God angry. If God created you in his image, don't say he made a mistake and go draw on yourself like he even did me on. Yeah, you get stabbed. There's all kinds of infections that come along with these tattoos. They say you're not supposed to make cuttings in your flesh. They got that from the Egyptians. God said, no, I made you in my image. And how I made you is how I want you. So with your natural hair, that's how God wants you. He didn't make you with no straight hair. If he wanted you with straight hair, he would have made you a, a little white woman or Japanese. You understand me? You got the best hair on earth, and you've learned to embrace that. All right? Can't make cuttings in your flesh, tattoos. All right? What's another thing? All right, give me uh, 1 Timothy 2 and 9 right quick. Now we'll get on the sisters. I want y'all to pay attention. All right? 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. This was a law that God gave to the children of Israel, and this gonna, and this gonna, uh, in like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So God said that we gotta adorn ourselves in modest, the women gotta adorn themselves in modest apparel. You understand? Like the sister's mother right here is dressed, she's very modest. That's how we got to teach our younger women to dress. Y'all look at the older women and learn things, okay? You can't go outside dressed like anything and expect to call yourself a princess and expect to find a husband. You're going to find a baby daddy, all right? All right. Hey, y'all. want to thank y'all for listening to us. Hope it was very interesting when we got to close down. Go to our website at www. Write this down. It's on the fly, it should be. www.israelunite.org. What's your intake on, on what, what you heard today concerning um, the Bible scriptures that came out, concerning that we the chosen people, concerning what we need to do in order to uprise as a nation of people? You know, what's your intake? My intake is that what y'all taught us today is something that I'm pretty sure most people don't know anything about. Right. I mean, we were coming uh, coming from the, the Bible. So like you say, we all were taught all this at Christianity, but yeah. today I learned that we are the chosen people for Correct. God. Correct. And I truly do appreciate y'all giving us that information. Like, what was, what did this information do to you that you received, or have you ever heard this information that you received today? No, this is the first time. Mm -hmm. This information that I have seen tonight has been very educational. Right. I know to me mm -hmm. and so many others, mm -hmm. but I'm glad to have this opportunity to speak in my behalf yes. as well as for the others. Mm -hmm. Knowing tonight is my first time hearing what I really am, mm -hmm. an Israelite, an Israelite, one of God's chosen people. Hey, all praise, and all as y'all stated, uh -huh. we have always been fooled. Mm -hmm about the terms black, mm -hmm. Negro, right, African American, right, and color. All these terms. But we do, re I realized tonight mm -hmm. that that was the white man laws that he wanted us yeah, to believe in. There you go, yes sir. And for many years, I put myself in that category as well. Mm -hmm. We have been fooled. Explain us and share with us some of the well, stuff that you I, learned. I, I just learned today that you guys just blessed me 
by knowing to obey God's commandments and to live by the Bible. And I learn and I feast eyes on some black men that know that marriage is what's appropriate. Yes, ma'am. And, yes, I, ma and I, I hate I didn't get to see any of the women, mm -hmm. but it just blessed me to give my life at 68 the way that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. But I like to see the young women have purpose. Right, right. You know, and, you, and to see so many black men just just being destroyed without the lack of knowledge. And what you all are doing is a blessing. Okay. And that's what I see. That's what I got out of it. Just to see y'all know the situation and give have a solution through the Bible to be men of God. So would you start infiltrating some of these teachings when you're able to, you know, give the word to the younger sisters and show well, the younger sisters? That's what, I, that's what the Bible wants us to do is older mm -hmm. women to help the young women. Yes. And there's yes. so many older women that you, that they doing what they shouldn't be doing. Right. But see, in this time in my life, I give it to the young people and try to encourage them to walk up right before God and do what God wants them to do. Mm -hmm. And you all are such a blessing to feast my eyes on you guys. If you don't learn anything else from tonight, two things. You are a what? I am a chosen person of God. A chosen person of God. You're an Israelite. Israelite. You're a chosen child mm -hmm. of God. And what else? What God wants us to do? God wants to obey his commandments. Obey his commandments. Those two things. Those two things, yes. That's what we got to get to as a nation. Okay. And that's what I see. That's what I got out of it. Just to see y'all know the situation and give have a solution through the Bible to be men of God. So would you start infiltrating some of these teachings when you're able to, you know, give the word to the younger sisters and show well, the younger sisters? That's what, I, that's what the Bible wants us to do is older mm -hmm. women to help the young women. Yes. And there's yes. so many older women that you, that they doing what they shouldn't be doing. Right. But see, in this time in my life, I give it to the young people and try to encourage them to walk up right before God and do what God wants them to do. Mm -hmm. and, and you are all are such a blessing to feast my eyes on you guys. And that's another reason why us as Israelite men, we marry our sisters. We, because really, true and indeed, we are the one cause of our sisters dressing the way they dress, mm -hmm. act the way they act, and doing the things that they do because the head if the head is not intact to the That's body, right. then the, the body, body is gonna, gonna be fall in line. It's to gonna that. be fall in mm -hmm. line. So we are the reason. So we're getting our sisters and, and our men to step up and become men and our sisters to become yeah. wise and create the family structure that the most high God told us, you know, Adam and Eve and then so on the kids. So we 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 commend that structure and we follow Follow the Bible to a T, and that's what we, as a nation of people, has came, came from doing. We came from following the instruction that God gave us. So, with the instruction that you, the, not so many men are not the head of a household. It's run by women, mm -hmm. and we weren't intended to be that way. Correct. We a covering. Correct, Amen. sister. Correct. Now, hey, that's IUIC Memphis. It's a great interview with Sister Linda Bullock. Sister Linda Bullock. Shalom, brothers. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.